So if you're new to Storyline 2, then this might be helpful to you because Storyline 2 has a new interaction called the slider interaction, which basically work like this. You've got a slider down there in green, and you've got a slider thumb, which in my case is a heart and it's customized, and I'll show you how to do that a bit later. But you can just move down the slider to however many steps or stops you've set, and you'll get different content on each of the stops and move back, etc. So I'll show you how to do that. So back here in my slide view, if you have a look here on the on the base layer, we've got the slider. So if you just select that, you'll have a slider tools menu up here, up here, up here. On the design tab, you'll see um, a variable that is automatically created when you insert the slider. And um, you have these options of, for updating the content that comes up with each step. One is while slider is dragged, the other is when the learner releases the thumb. Either one is fine. And you've got a start of zero and an end of five. And the initial is zero, which means that it'll start at zero and it'll have five steps. And it, this one means that it'll move in one step increments until it gets to five. And then if you go to the format tab, you can customize both your track, which is the, the long green bar down here in my case. So you can customize colors or whatever you like um, there. And then with the thumb, which is a little bit more customized in my case, and I'll show you again how to do that in a minute, you can customize by choosing any of these different kinds of thumbs that are built in storyline. So maybe you like that one or maybe you like that one and uh, away you go. So how you build this, we're going to go to a new file and just show you how to do that really quickly. We're going to go to the insert tab, we're going to go to controls and we're going to choose a slider that we like. I kind of like this skinny one there and then you just draw it on the slide. So we've got a slider there and our menus appear. So this one's got a start of zero and an end of ten and it's also going to go in one step increments. So the way that the slider is going to work is if you go to have a look at variables, which you don't have to do when you're building this, this is just to show you, it automatically creates a variable called slider1. You can change the name if you like. We're not going to do that now. And what you're going to do is basically the way that I've done this one, and there's different ways of, of doing sliders, and you can see more tutorials on the Articulate website, but the way that we're going to do it here, we're going to, we're going to create a few slides. So we'll say number one and we'll say say number two there and there you go I've created my ten layers for my ten steps in my slider so what we're going to do is we're going to start creating some triggers so we're going to say uh, show layer one when the slider moves it's this trigger all the way down the bottom when the slider moves on the condition that the variable is equal to one so if we go preview that, let's go to layer one first and actually put something in there so that we know that we have arrived. So we'll say that's number one. So if we preview that, we've got a slider there and we're going to move it one and there you go, it's going to show you the content for the layer one. So that's basically how you build it. You would go in and just copy and paste these triggers and change the numbers for each layer and you've got it all done basically. Now I'm just going to go back to my project because there's a couple of tips that I want to show you. Now the first thing I want to show you is that I actually have a whole bunch of content on this base uh, slide, base layer, that I don't want to show when the slider starts working and you go through the different layers and see the different kinds of content. So what I'm going to do right now, I've just got it hidden so I'm just going to show you. There we go, that's all my content and this is just going to play an animation and all, it's all going to fly away and then I'll be left with my base uh, layer. So I'm just going to show you that. So this one, it's actually got music playing in the background and the whole animation has already gone while I've had you on pause. Um, but basically this is my base layer and I don't want this content to show when I'm moving through my layers, right? I want all that to disappear. So what I've had to do in that case is on each of the layers if you open up this quite big and you go down to base layer, you can see that 
their face layer objects. You can see that I've got everything turned off. If you just click on this eye and turn it off, except for the slider, because obviously I need to be able to see the slider when I'm moving through the layers, but I don't want any of the other content on this slide to be seen. And I've done the same for the other the other four layers, right? So that's one thing. The other thing I wanted to show you, so this slider has uh, five steps, but it does start at zero, which is this one here. So you go one, and then two, three, four, and five. So we've seen all of them, but I actually wanted the user to be able to go back all the way to home, or the base layer, uh, but what happens is that they stay on this step one. So what I've had to do is add another few triggers to stop that from happening. So back in my slide, I've got these five triggers that I've added, which are basically hide each layer when the slider moves if the slider variable is equal to a value of zero, which is the value that it's on when it's at that very, very first stop. So I've just basically copied and pasted this trigger over and over and just changed the layer. And when we preview that, we can go through the different steps. And if we go back to this one, it takes us back to that base layer, which is that what I, the result that I wanted. So that trigger works really well. I have one final thing to show you. If you want to customize the slider itself, it's pretty easy. So you go back into the format tab. For the thumb, the way that I got this to be a heart shape is simply by going to thumb fill and choosing picture and you're just basically filling that shape with a picture. So I'm going to change it to this little flower. So if you do that, it changes to that. So it's very easy to do. And the track, you can't customize it quite in the same way. However, something you, you can do is actually make the track transparent. So you go to track fill and select no fill, track border and select no outline. And as you can see, that's transparent now. And I'm just going to bring an image from outside and there we go. And just plonk it on top. Let's say that I really love flowers. So I just want a flower track and you send it back a bit. And you can basically position that any way you want. And you know, play around with it and you can use all sorts of, of uh, f cool effects and, and special things. So the slider, it's a pretty basic interaction, but you can get really, really creative and customize it to your heart's content. Hope that's helpful. Bye.